Hereby I open this academic ceremony in which Viliana Siquera will defend the academic thesis identification of new antigens for the diagnosis of visceral leishmaniasis application in immunochromatography. May I invite you to present a summary of your study and the conclusions of your thesis. Thank you, Heilig. Thank you, Heilig Schimmer Prohector, dear members of the opposition, dear supervisor, family, friends and colleagues on site and on live stream. I am very happy to be here today to show you my presentation, identification of new antigens for the diagnosis of visceral leishmaniasis for application and immunochromatographic. I begin my presentation by bringing initial consideration about leishmaniasis, the central focus of my thesis. This chapter is part of the book, Updates in Tropical Medicine, Protozoan, published in Brazil in 2020. So, leishmaniasis is a disease caused by protozoan from Leishmania donovani uh, complex, and the disease has great human and animal medical importance because it involves a complex interaction between the geological agents, vectors, reservoirs, and hosts. These parasites are transmitted to human or dog by the bite, uh, by the bite or infect the females and fly. The transmission of the disease can happen when a sand fly bites a, sick, bites a sick animal and later bites a human. Leishmaniasis is a complex group of infectious diseases that present a broad spectrum of clinical manifestation. There are three main forms of the disease. Cutane leishmaniasis, the most form causing skin ulcers. Mucocutane leishmaniasis is the, is the most the same form, affecting the mouth and nose. And visceral leishmaniasis, no S. calazar, is the most serum form, causing death in up to 90% of untreated people. So what's the impact of visceral leishmaniasis in the world? In 2020, seven countries were considered endemic for the disease. Today, more than one billion people live in areas endemic for visceral leishmaniasis. Most cases occur in Brazil, Eastern Africa, and India. Sandfly are common in search Europe, where the disease is also endemic. Important cases come, in, come many from Africa and Americas. So many countries have a high risk for the disease, such as Portugal, Greece, and many areas of Spain and such France. In America, visceral leishmaniasis is also endemic and has been described in at least 20 countries. Brazil is the main country endemic for the disease in this region. And what's the importance of the diagnosis for the disease? The cl clinical symptoms of the disease have uh, mimic many other common diseases. Late diagnosis is an important fa factor associated with death from visceral leishmaniasis. So early recognition is important for a better prognosis. Therefore, the early detection of cases with a fast treatment is, fast treatment is strongly recommended. In the second chapter of my thesis, a kinesin-derived antigens was, uh, were, was evaluated in the serological diagnosis of human and canine leishmaniasis. One of the main group of leishmania genes used in serological diagnosis for visceral leishmaniasis is kinesin. Kinesin has multiple, multiple antigenic blocks of 39 amino acid sequence related to, to antigenicity of this family. Today, in this world, uh, the K39 protein derived from kinesin is the most used antigen in the commercial diagnosis for the disease. However, its sensitivity and specificity 
can vary greatly because of the low number of uh, repeated blocks of 39 amino acid sequence in, your, in its composition, 6.5 blocks. In this work, uh, a new antigen with a high number of free repeated blocks, 50.3, uh, was tested for the diagnosis of visceral leishmaniasis. In the human ELISA test, most of the recombinant antigens show the same sensitivity, 97%. But KDDR plus was the only on antigen didn't show cross-reactive with sample from the control group. In the K9 ELISA test, again, most of the recombinant antigens show the same sensitivity, 97%. However, KDDR plus present a lower percent of cross-reactive between the tested antigens, only 11% percentage, show a high specificity. The immunochromatograph test with KDDR plus detected more patients infected with leishmania than commercial test. KDDR plus detected 26 of 29 serum tests from patients infected, resulting in a sensitivity around 90%. In addition, all serum from patient health were correctly diagnosed for both tests. However, the commercial test uh, showed the cross-reactive with serum from patients with Chagas disease. While KDDR Plus has great specificity, its sensitivity is similar to other uh, tested kinase antigens. This limited sensitivity arises from the challenges of the, these antigens in detecting dogs without clinical signs of the disease. So in this chapter, we evaluated a new antigen derived from Leishmania genus family capable of identifying Leishmaniasis in dogs without clinical signs of the disease, that is, asymptomatic dogs. The DIN1 protein has many linear B cell epitopes and a longer scramble region that increases the possibility of the protein by being recognized by lymphocytes. The DIN1 antigens was the only one capable of detecting 100% of um, asymptomatic dogs um, and present a low percent of cross-reactivity with dogs infected other disease. So far, we have two promising proteins, two promising targets, KDDR plus and DIN1 protein, to be used singly in the diagnosis of visceral leishmaniasis. However, for, a, for an effective diagnosis, a single antigen composer of the better of the two protein is necessary. Therefore, in this chapter, we, in this work, we studied uh, the oligopeptides present in the KDDR plus and DIN1 proteins related to good performance of each protein. For the selection of potential immune reactive oligopeptides, the DIN1 protein was subjected to bioinformatic predictions and KDDR plus protein subjected to a scan window. 17 peptides from DIN1 protein and 20 peptides from KDDR were produced on, on cellulose membrane. The peptide 10 from DIN1 protein and the peptide 9, 19 duplicates from KDDR plus were selected because they are highly recognized by serum from dogs infected with leishmania. In addition, the duplicate 5 from the KDDR plus were selected for present a great recognition with antibodies from asymptomatic dogs. In general, all oligopeptides analyzed show good performance in identifying dogs with leishmaniasis. K plus 1 and DIN1 peptides and the peptide mixture identify 
almost symptomatic and asymptomatic dogs. However, the, mi the peptide mix correctly identified the control group or dogs in our um, control group of dogs in around 99% of cases, resulting in a high accuracy compared to the other peptides. In general, we able to identify some peptide sequence from KDDR plus and Dynamon protein that show good results for identification of symptomatic or asymptomatic dogs in conventional serological tests. The next step is to validate the oligopeptides that were identified in Brazil in a new detection platform, a low cost that until now not have been used for any neglected disease. The peptides will be mobilized on aluminum chip for the analysis of thermal rebide through heat transfer. The biosense with point of care characteristics will be permitting the qualitative and quantitative detection of antibody again visceral leishmaniasis. In general, um, sorry, the Partnership between the Maastricht University and Federal University of Minas Gerais uh, consolidated studies relation between the Netherlands and Brazil make a possible a double degree agreement between the U university, opening the door for a, for a new student to follow the same path. Today, KDDR Plus patent is licensed for the commercial use and is now widely used in diagnostic tests in Brazil, with a good result, in, uh, good commercial impact, and a, a social one. KDDR plus recombinant antigen showed it's possible for a strong impact on society, society overcome the academic barriers, and research the population that needs this service with a good public health impact. This work focuses on the most important parasitic infectious disease challenging in Latin America and Europe, visceral leishmaniasis. In addition to existing economic challenges of the disease, there are also scientific challenges to control of the disease. It is possible to improve the performance of serological diagnosis by search for new targets can, can be applied on different diagnostic platforms. From a field perspective, this work can collaborate to the development of more effective and efficient new methodology for the many neglected disease. Many people made this work possible. I would like to thank everyone who contributed to the conclusion of this work. I would like to thank everyone for their attention, and I would like to give the word back to the Prorector. Thank you. Thank you very much for your clear presentation. And uh, then we will now move to the uh, discussion part of the session. Uh, before doing so, let me introduce the supervisory team, Professor Clay, Professor Fujiwara, and uh, Dr. Van Grinson. Uh, they will not be asking questions today, so, but at least you will now know uh, who they are if you didn't know them already. Uh, a welcome to you all in this session, also those who are joining on the live stream. We will today also have one of the opponents on the live stream, so we will switch to that later. My name is Ralf Peters, I'll be acting as the pro-rector today. Uh, and then let's move to the first opponent. Um, the opposition will be opened by Professor Leon Klaasens. He was chair of the assessment committee and he's also acting as today's secretary of the degree committee. He holds a chair on uh, vertebrate paleontology and evolution at the Faculty of Science and Engineering of Maastricht University. Professor Glassens. Thank you. Parabens <laughs> is thank you. what I quickly <laughs> Google translated. Um, uh, thank you for a nice presentation. Uh, impressive work too. So many chapters published in a patent. So. Uh, very impressive. Um, I would like to start with a question that's maybe a little bit broader. So there's a new test, there's a new biosensor. 
and that means that you can go test and you can test uh, humans. Canines are a potential, right, are a big pool of the disease. So my question is really about uh, then, right, what comes next? So if you can test, for instance, uh, canines, stray dogs, and you uh, notice that, you know, there's a certain incidence of the disease, what will then ensue? What, what are the policy steps or? Thank you, Haile Schimmer, opponent. Um, the expected uh, in the years ago, if I put the antigen in the Biosense platform, and uh, this Biosense platform is a technology by a faculty of engineering in Maastricht. I, he, I, I learned a little bit uh, about the technology, but I don't have time for the uh, conclusion they experiment in the platform. But this technology can, um, can help the diagnosis in Brazil because it has a um, more reason for exec uh, execute and is have a low cost for the population and is more fast for the detec detection of cases of the dog or human infected with the disease. Yeah, and so would normally then maybe treatment ensue or would maybe in a stray canine population, would you have culling or euthanasia? It's possible treatment with a human. But in, in dogs in Brazil, it's not. Uh, it's possible, but it uh, has a high cost for the population. And we have two, um, two drugs for the disease. But the, the big problem is about the resistance of the the protozoa. I hope he answer your question. No. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I like to switch gears then, right, with, with another uh, question. So there's a new biosensor. There's a new test that's been developed, and uh, in this case, specifically too for a disease that has a high incidence in the tropics, subtropics. Um, what is the temperature range in which this test can function? Are there any stages where cooling is needed? Can it be done in ambient temperatures? Yes, this is a problem for a biosensor in Brazil because the temperature interfere in, um, interfere the the result, but you need better the question for the um, good results in Brazil. I've, I made, I did test in Brazil with the biosensor and the temperature um, don't collaborate with my results there <laughs> because um, in Brazil is warmer, is very, very hot and is necessary to stabilize this, this room, in, in uh, temperature room first, for them make a, a true result. But I don't get uh, finalized the, the experiments. Yeah, yeah. And is that a limitation and that's largely on a, a cellular molecular level or is that a limitation Right on a molecular biology level, or is that a limitation that's uh, inherent too in parts of the sensor technology, which means that maybe there can be improvements to this? Sorry, can you repeat? repeat? So, the, right, the, the difficulty with, with having the test operate um, at higher temperatures, yeah. right? Is that a limitation that comes out of the molecular biology first and foremost? Or is that a limitation maybe that has parts of the sensor design in it also, and maybe there's room for improvement there? First, here, it's not a problem. It's not better the question. 
but in use in Brazil is relevant problem for us. It's necessary uh, study the uh, better form for the regulation of this. Thank you. And then um, I would like to ask one final question about your uh, propositions and specifically about proposition number seven, if that's possible. Biosense are especially crucial in low-income countries, where their low cost and user-friendly nature maximize the possibility of for point-of-care application. Thank you. So my question about this proposition is as follows. Are all uh, biosensors low cost, or are there any in existence that are um, expensive? Repeat, please, sorry. So my question about this proposition mm -hmm. is, right, um, are all biosensors across the board, so not the one, for instance, that's developed, but in general, are they all, by definition, cheap, low cost, or are expensive ones in existence too? I hope uh, <laughs> the biosensor to be a low cost for Brazil. Um, the team here is work for this, but it's necessary more adaptation for the, the, uh, the, the um, reality in Brazil for the, because the technology in, in Brazil, I think that uh, is, is necessary adapted for the, the, uh, the machine there, the, reco the recourses in, the, in Brazil. Thank you very much. Then I give it back to the pro-rector. Thank you, Professor Klaasens. Then um, the opposition will be continued by um, Professor uh, Araujo. Uh, he was a member of the assessment committee, uh, and he was a chair in parasitology at the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil. Thank you. Uh, uh, Williani, I start <clears throat> congratulating you in your group. It's a nice work. You, you achieved very nice results. You have some publications. You add a lot of information to the literature. You have patents and you have a product that is being used there, as you said. Uh, my concern here, and that's where I'm going to focus my discussion, is about uh, the study you made in trying to identify cross-reactions with your, with your serum or, or animals, especially the canine leishmaniasis. You choose three diseases that are really common in Brazil, and in my opinion, it's really very important to study them. It's Babesia, Ehrlichia, and Trypanosoma. So you, in your last chapter, that in my opinion is a very good one, the number four, you propose some more experiments to improve the sensibility and specificity you have. In my opinion, you achieved very good sensibilities, but you had some problems with specificity, especially when you think about two important diseases there, that is Babesia and Trypanosoma. So my question here is this. What are your plans to improve this specificity, and what are you planning to do next to to have better results. And I'm asking this, and I, I also wanted you to use in your answer two important points we have, need to have in mind. First, the number of animals we see that you change the number of serum you have in different words, especially the last one that you show it, uh, the results separately for each disease. 
and the epidemiolog the epidemiology of the diseases in Brazil. So what are you planning to do concerning this, these issues? Thank you for your question, highly similar opponent. Uh, I chose three diseases, uh, three diseases because it has a lot of uh, index, index uh, about the cross reaction in the diagnosis of visceral leishmaniasis. Babesia is protozoan, like a leishmania, so it's a little bit same in the in the chain. And Ehrlichia, Ehrlichiosis is a bacteria. This, uh, this disease ha have great um, uh, impact in diagnosis because in them key area for leishmaniasis, uh, canine leishmaniasis, the dogs uh, almost have the two or three di disease um, uh, sim sim simultaneous. Uh, so it's necessary to identify diagnosis more specific because the treatment for the disease is, is different. So, for the better uh, specificity of my protein, I need change the I need to change the concentration of the oligopeptides, the mixture of peptides. Change the concentration of each protein, each oligopeptide, and maybe research the other uh, oligopeptides that improve the question, the specificity. So I, I tested only, uh, I, I forget, two concentration of the, this mixture. I, I present here the better concentration of the, with my test, but I think I need to test more and incorporate more molecules. I think that I can better the, the diagnosis there. See. Okay, thank you. So continue this discussion. You, I liked very much your chapter four because you moved from big molecules to small parts of the molecules, so this is very nice to be, you can be more accurate. So, have you thought about uh, working in a kind of reverse serology, like you can find epitopes that will bind to antibodies against Babesia or these other diseases instead of checking for epitopes good for the Leishmania? And then maybe doing this, you identify the, the ones that are giving you cross reactions and removing them from the molecules. And also, what can you tell us about the homology of these proteins from these different species? Are them, I don't know how is the dynamin and, and the kinesin from these other species, are them very similar uh, to identical. Can you find conserved domains and remove them from the molecules too? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about these two steps? Do you think they, are, they may be good for you in next steps? Yes. Um, I reserve the study small molecules um, because a big molecule is have more change for recognizer by other organs. Uh, many Babesia, because it's a protozoan like a Leishmania. So these parasites has um, many linearity homology. So when I reduce the size of the molecule, I reduce the change the change chance of the other organism recognize this this sequence. The sequence is um, stay more specificity for the organism that I can that I study. 
So I I have uh, in Brazil have a lot of cases of the babesia in early in, in the diagnosis. When I use the specific molecule, I put in one molecule uh, many sequence more specific for leishmania. I exclu 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 oh, sorry, ex exclude the sequ sequence sequence sequences uh, that can recognize other organisms. In kinasin, I select select the amino acid sequence that recognize only leishmania, no recognize babesi, babesiosi or erlichiosi. But it's the diag the perfect diagnosis is is difficult because uh, um, I, I remove the sequence responsible pro for cross reactive, but uh, but it has risk issues for the in, in sequence. And when I get more sequence in the molecule, um, I I think that I it's possible recognize a game for the disease for other diseases. Okay, thank you, promoter. Thank you, Professor Arrugio. Um The opposition will then be continued by Professor uh, Santana. Um, he was also a member of the assessment committee. He was a chair in, uh, in parasitology at the Federal University of Minas Gerais, Brazil. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. And um, first of all, I would like to thank Maastricht the University for giving me the chance to be here. I would like to thank Professor Ricardo Fujiwara, Professor Thomas Clay for the invitation to, to be part of the panel. Um, I would like to congratulate Williani for the nice presentation and the whole team for developing a great piece of work. Um, this work has a great relevance for Brazil and especially for us. And I'll give you the reasons for that, because visceral leishmaniasis is endemic in our country, it's endemic in our state, Minas Gerais state, and also endemic in our very city where the university is. So the urbanized vector is widespread, it's hardly found in sylvatic environments, so it's basically urban, and it's responsible for the spreading of the disease. And just for you to have an idea, uh, in 2017, um, almost 33,000 dogs were screened with more than 6,500 positive for visceral leishmaniasis, which gives you almost 20% of positivity. And imagine if you consider the asymptomatic dogs, which are poorly detected. Um, you were able to select the, K, the, the, the KDDR+, plus, which is responsible for the ability to discriminate leishmane infected, uh, dogs from the uninfected ones uh, without presenting a huge cross-reactivity -react with other organisms. But to me, the highlight of the work, however, uh, was the discovery of the Dynamin-1, which is able to actually detect the asymptomatic dogs, right? Um, but when I read the propositions of the dissertation, I was surprised not to see Anything about the dynamine one on the list, and why? Why did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much, highly stimul opponent. It it is a good question. I focus on the KDDR because the uh, this protein is patent and lancet in Brazil, and dynamine one is in uh, primer test yet, so I improved the, my, prop my proposition, include the, this protein. This is wrong, <laughs> because the dyno one is good, uh, like a KDDR too. Right, so carry on. Uh, your research has led to the development of more efficient tests, okay, and also new technologies to generate cheap, efficient tests to be used in the field. So the question is, 
are you going to test the dynamin one and maybe the mixture of, of the peptide mixture, the, the chimera if you like, uh, in the field for a better validation? Sorry, or, or repeat. Are, are you planning to, to use the dynamin one and the chimera, I mean the mixture of, the, of peptides, uh, uh, maybe using a broader Sierra bank to validate the work a bit better? Uh, so, uh, your question is about the group of the serum tested, sorry. It, it's just like, uh, are you planning to use the, the antigens? Yeah. On, maybe on a field trial? Yes, yes, yes. I, I hope you use it, the, this molecule, um, but when the, the mo this molecule is not uh, standard yet because I don't have time for this. So when the protein, the KDDR and DIME1 protein is definite, is um, already, is, is good for the diagnosis, but the oligopeptide necessary more tested and validated for the use in immunochromatographic or in biosensor is necessary more tested and experiment and more sample for validated this molecule user diagnosis. Right, okay. So the, the KDDR plus has gone commercial already. You, you've shown that on your presentation. What I would like to hear a bit more is the phase two work on the biosensor. Um, and the question is, a bit, you, you already, maybe you answered that question, because um, uh, what I was about to ask is about the low cost of the, of the biosensor, and also how feasible it is on, a, on the field, because I'm thinking about the applicability of your work. So is it feasible to be used on the field? Mm, in the moment, no, no. But in a future, in a future, it's possible because uh, the team has work for the change the technology and um, change the format for the application in field and for the change the lab for the camp for the field. Uh, Sorry. So that's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sandana. Then uh, the opposition will be continued um, on the other side of the table um, by Professor uh, Solano Gallego. Um, she was a member of the assessment committee and she holds a chair in uh, Leishmaniasis at the uh, Instituto, uh, um, at the Universidad Autonoma of Barcelona in uh, Spain. Please. Well, good morning to everyone, and thank you. I would like to thank you also for the invitation of being part of this uh, tribunal here for this PhD for the Maastricht University, the co-supervisors and co-supervisor, and and I want to congratulate Will Williana because I think that uh, well, your PhD is very nice. You have already published three papers in relevant scientific journals, so I mean they are very good journals. So, I mean, all of this work has been reviewed already, and so I think um, very, very nice, very nice work, and also you have a patent, and I think there is a lot of future work to come, so just uh, a, big, a, big a big congratulations to you. So I just want to focus more from a doc part. I'm a veterinarian, so I'm just not gonna focus on more technical parts of your work because um, I don't have the knowledge, but I would like to ask you if you can think about limitations of the dogs that you study. Do you think you have some limitations? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that first limitation is the asymptomatic dogs, the detection of these dogs. All uh, agents used uh, has limited for, for identification this dog. And other limitation is the produce uh, protein the in standard form because for the produce um, for the production 
the big molecule, the uh, big quantitative of the protein, uh, it, like a, a standard form, is difficult. So I super the limitation producing uh, oligopeptides because the small molecule is more easy to produce, and I I can I get the molecule uh, in easy form is more easy. The first limitation I think that I this the producer or the antigen and they identified asymptomatic dogs for the OH antigens. Okay, but well, just as a comment, no, in general you classify symptomatic and asymptomatic, but you base that on a physical examination, yes? And, and then a serological test, no? Because you, then you, you do a serology and it's seropositive or you do PCR or cytology, no, to make a diagnosis for both. But like normally in Europe, what we, or not in Europe, but normally it will be to check the health status of an animal or a human, will be to also check if, if a part of having, there are dogs that they don't have clinical signs, mm -hmm. but they have renal disease. And uh, these dogs, they are not asymptomatic. And you are classifying them as asymptomatic, yes? So it's very important to run a CVC, a biochemistry profile, a urea analysis, a serum electrophoresis, because these are laboratory abnormalities that they are also clinical pathological abnormalities. The dogs are not healthy. So the classification, I think, that you use is too simple, yes? Mm -hmm. I yes. think so. It will be very good to do run like with your ELISAs, no, or immunochromatographic mm -hmm. and classify better these dogs. And also you need to think that the disease also is very broad. We have dogs with mild disease that self-cure without no treatment and dogs that they have very severe renal disease. And it's so wide that in your case, it's not so clear in what stage you know, of disease, status of disease they are. It's just sick dogs and that's it. So I think uh, probably a more detailed and characterization of the dogs will help to maybe to see what is the diagnostic performance of, of your test. And, and the other question I did have was like, what Babesia species uh, these dogs were infected with? Because I don't think it's, it's a state in the thesis. Babesia canis. Oh, Babesia canis only? Yes. Not Babesia bodgeli or? No. Bab no, Babesia canis. Babesia. Okay. No, because I think in Brazil you, you should have also Babesia bodgeli. Not only Babesia canis, no? It's what? No, I'm, I mean that like at least in Europe, in the south part of Europe, we, we have in some areas Babesia canis, but mainly we have Babesia bodgeli, although it's not very common. So probably in Brazil you have Babesia bodgeli because it's transmitted by ribicephalus sanguineus yeah. more than Babesia canis. Because did you, did you check these, these dogs with babesiosis with molecular techniques to prove that they were infected with yes. babesia? Highly similar uh, opponent, thank you for a question. This sample I give in the hospital, veterinary, and the tutor uh, of dogs uh, came the dogs in the, in the hospital for the exams. They pay for all exams for identification. And then I have the contact with the hospital and then they give me the sample and the result of the each sample. The okay, molecular. But, but, okay, but the, sometimes they will put Babesia positive and that's it with the without the speciation, you know? Just, yes. just to check, to know what, exactly okay. what Babesia is because it's not a state, I think, in the thesis, so that's why. And because you were talking about cross-reactivity, it will be good to know exactly what type of Babesia will. And another question more philosophical, and I probably you didn't do it, but as you know now, we know more than dogs that develop clinical leishmaniosis, a lot of times they might be co-infected with other pathogens. So my question is, did you check your sick dogs if they were co-infected with something else? Thank you for your question, highly esteemed opponent, but you can repeat the question. Yes, my question is like your sick dogs that you use in your studies, no? Uh, did you check for Ehrlichia, for Babesia, for Trypanosoma in these dogs? If I tested, mm -hmm. no, I received the diagnosis. The Tecruzai, uh, the dogs with Tecruzai is 
um, is for a group that, uh, that study with the disease in dogs. So the dogs, I think <laughs> that uh, when I received the diagnosis, I I, I, I agree the diagnosis of the people. No, but my question is that your sick dogs that you said that they did have leishmaniosis, yes, the dogs yeah. with leishmaniosis, did you check if they were co-infected with trypanosoma or with Lerichia canis oh. or Babesia? Oh. That's, that's my question. I made the PCR with, for Babesia for the, and the Lerichia. We check with PCR with pri specific primers. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor um, Sonano uh, Gallego. Um, the opposition will uh, now move online um, to uh, Professor um, Losada Perez. Um, she was a member of the assessment committee and she holds um, a chair in experimental soft matter and um, thermal uh, physics at the uh, Université Libre de Bruxelles in Belgium. Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize uh, not for not being uh, present uh, now. Um, it was not possible. And I would like to thank the, um, the supervisors for inviting me to be part of your jury. And of course, uh, Parabange. Uh, congratulations for your uh, thesis in general, for your presentation, which was very clear, and for the content, which was very relevant. And, uh, it's a very uh, important problem in, in uh, your country in particular, and um, I think your findings, findings have a great potential. So I'm a physicist, and I would like to ask you some questions related to physical chemical aspects of your of your PhD, okay? So first of all, um, you're dealing or you're working with immunochromatographic uh, serological tests, right? I've seen in some of your sketches that you have added gold uh, colloidal nanoparticles. Now, my question is uh, why you use this type of uh, colloids in the, in the system? Why you use gold uh, colloids and not, for instance, aluminum or other types of nanoparticles? Thank you, highly similar opponent, for your question. It's a good question. Uh, in Brazil, this, this molecule, the colo colloidal gold, is cheap and they get a uh, diagnosed more cheap. So it's important for the detection because immunochromatographic is um, uh, the results is by color colorimetry, and the the this molecule can, uh, get the co co color for the identification in a result positive and validate the test when the line test. Uh, line of test, um, line of test. Sorry, I forget the the, the words for. No it's important for for validate when the line of test high highlight, and the I have a positive test. The molecule give a color for the for the results. I choose the molecule okay. for the coast. Uh, well, actually, gold I think is not very cheap, but then aluminum would be cheaper, right? You would have. A, but my question is, what makes gold uh, deliver such a clear color? What's the physical property of gold? The the mo Thank you for the question, highly similar opponent. The molecule, the old, uh, gold, binding in the antibodies or agents for specific, mm -hmm. uh, rebinding for specific bind, sorry. And then we uh, put the sample in the diagnosis with a um, um, correspondent molecule uh, the, in, in this case, in this case with my immunochromatographic, we identify in the sample antibodies. 
So the antibodies uh, binding a uh, por por portion specific with uh, antigens that already bind with the molecule. When I have a positive sample, the connection with antibody antigens and antigens uh, binding with uh, uh, gold, the, mm -hmm. I have the positive result. Okay, all right. So, um, of course, you showed a lot of um, cross activity and, uh, well, ELISA results. Uh, these are state-of-the-art um, biosensors. But at the end of your PhD, you mentioned that the follow-up will consist on designing a new biosensing tool based on heat transfer. Mm -hmm. So, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, so my question here is, uh, well, I have several questions actually regarding this. Um, first, you mentioned you will use aluminum surfaces and you will immobilize your receptors on aluminum. Uh, so the question related to this is why aluminum and how you're gonna immobilize your receptors? Thank you for your question, hi opponent. And you can repeat the, yeah. the question. So for the yeah, for the heat transfer biosensors that you you say it would be uh, quite interesting to develop. Uh, you mentioned somewhere in your in your manuscript that um, the surface to to use coupled to this um, technique would be an aluminum surface where you would immobilize your receptors. Now the question is why aluminum and how you're gonna immobilize the receptors in aluminum? For a question, how you see your opponent? Uh, yeah. I choose al al aluminum because it's common use for the, the biosensor here and is cheap for the, the technique and it's possible binding any molecules there. Uh, for the diagnosis, I pretend the in aluminum chip um, put a polymer that have good uh, recognized and the strong um, li, uh, rebinding in the aluminum and the polymer. And then mm -hmm. I put my molecule and this polymer, not on aluminum chip. The aluminum chip is the made uh, when I, how I detect in the, the quantify of, of the, mensure, mensure the heat, the, mm -hmm. uh, the transference reach, reach. The aluminum only for the detection of the temperature. And it's easy uh, by the, the, the molecule then. Okay, so I assume then you use aluminum because it's a good thermal conductor, right? Exactly. And so let's imagine you, you have your receptor mounted on your aluminum surface and you uh, expose your target to the receptor, what would you expect in, uh, in the thermal transfer signal? What would be the, the physical property that would change and will indicate you, well, uh, the molecule is binding to the receptor? In your state of the art, it's change of color. In this new biosensor, what would be the the output. Okay, thank you for what your you question. Expect? But I, I don't expect in the biosense yet, but uh, I think that I, I put the, my molecule with a polymer in the cheap aluminum when I put the um, read, transfer read, the temperature is low mm -hmm when I have a positive sample because have a block of the transfer heat. So okay, a positive so you, result you is lower temperature, a negative higher temperature. 
is not colorimetric of detection. Okay. So you mean your heat transfer resistance will increase when you have a binding event? Exactly, because uh, it's not dependent of color. I need the type of signs, signs of the graph. And mm -hmm. uh, only this about the transfer heat. When I have mm -hmm. the positive, the, the temperature is lower. Okay, so it means you will also not need colloidal gold, right? In your, uh, in your sensor. Can you repeat, please? Yeah, can you please uh, so also you answer need, uh, briefly? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can, you can finish the question, but uh, okay. yeah, yeah. please so a brief answer. I just, uh, yeah. So I was asking if you, in the new um, biosensor, in the uh, thermal biosensor, you will not need colloidal gold, right? Exactly. It's not necessary. Okay. Good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Losada Perez. Um, then the opposition will be continued by uh, Dr. Padilla Diaz. Um, she was a member of the assessment committee and uh, her expertise is in uh, plant embryogenetics uh, here at the Faculty of Science and Engineering of Maastricht University. Thank you so much. And first of all, congratulations, William, because you did an extremely good uh, job with a lot of applications, but also in, in a wide range of topics, which is not, uh, not easy. You touch upon uh, parasitology, detection, diseases, physics, genetics, everything. So congratulations to you and congratulations to your, to your promoters. I have only a few questions. Uh, I have more specific questions related with the biology because I enjoyed a lot reading your, your thesis. I'm a biologist by training and one of my courses during my, my, my degree was parasitology. And I'm wondering, uh, related with the life cycle of the, of the parasite, you were trying to detect um, the, the, two, the two proteins, which is uh, KDDR plus and the DIN1. And, and you were detecting in the mastigote uh, phase. What do you think if those proteins can be detected as well in the early stages of the, of the life cycle, like in the promastigote phase of the, of the parasite? Might it be possible to improve the, the earliest, early detection in, of the disease in the early phases? Thank you, highly similar uh, opponent. Uh, can you repeat the question for me, please? If your proteins yeah. that you have in your chapters two and three can uh, be applied to detect early stages of the disease, because the parasite has the amastigote phase, but also the promastigote, do you think that might be detect the promastigote? Yes, for the molecule is specific for the leishmania, independent of the format. So it's important to detect amastigote because it is the, the format in the sample, in the organisms. Um, the the uh, promastigote format changes so fast in the organism for the de detection. And it's not important for my diagnosis the format of the parasite is important, the antibodies. And uh, when the, the, the sand fly bites the human or dogs infected with promastigote, but mm -hmm. in the fast, uh, in the few moments, the change for the amastigote. For my diagnosis, is not relevant. Okay, thank you. I have another question in relationship with the with those proteins because you you choose those proteins based on on Leishmania infantum, but I think uh, are those proteins also available in Leishmania donovani? Can you repeat, sir? Uh, those proteins yeah. you when you selected them, you 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 use in your the, your title of your of your uh, chapters is mentioned that you selected from Leishmania infantum, yeah. which is one of uh, the the parasites. But there is also another one, which is Leishmania donovani. 
Those proteins are also specific for Leishmania donovani. So <laughs> I don't test with sample from Leishmania donovani yet, but only Leishmania infanto, mm -hmm. because it's the mainly uh, parasite in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, low sample with donovani. Yeah. My last question is, if you could modify something from your thesis based on your knowledge that you acquire, what would you like to, to do? Or what, how do you improve some things that you have the feeling that could be improved? Uh, for the detection of the Novani or, or parasite? In general. Um, so I hope um, improve the, the diagnosis with uh, produce a molecule that uh, have more specific specificity molecules, more sequence, small sequence that can more sensitive for the diagnosis mm -hmm. in one molecule. I. Liliane Sequeira, the time appointed for defending your thesis has passed. The degree committee uh, will now withdraw to discuss the quality of your thesis and your defense. Uh, I request that you and your company uh, await the results of our deliberations and our return in this room. I adjourn. The PhD defense has now ended. The degree committee will debate the candidate's performance behind closed doors. This process usually takes about 10 minutes. is tied long road i don't waste no time break rules because fate decides with the team and we chase the light i make a move fall down shake it off i hate to lose that branch break it off no room for negativity praise and love prepare for deep park because we're taking off Hit the mileage, Yeah, I'm
I reopen the session. Liliana Siquer, the degree committee here present has assessed the quality of your thesis and your defense. In view of its positive verdict and taking into account your previous qualifications, the degree committee has decided to grant you the degree of doctor. Professor Clay is authorized to confer upon you this academic distinction in accordance with Dutch University custom. I invite your supervisor to now take the floor. Do you promise to work in accordance with the principles of scientific integrity at all times to be careful and honest, transparent, independent, and responsible? Yes, I promise. By the authority vested in us by law and in conformity with the decision of the committee here present, I hereby confer upon you, Liliani Fernanda Siguera, the degree of doctor and grant you all rights attached by the custom and law. As evidence of this, I now present you with the degree certificate signed by the rector, the secretary, and the other members of the committee, and affixed with the official seal of the university. Liliani, let me use the opportunity to uh, be the first one to really congratulate you. Very, very nice uh, uh, work and uh, very well presented. Uh, uh, and a pioneer of our collaboration, eh? because uh, this collaboration goes back about nine years. Nine years ago, I visited uh, Minas Gerais with a delegation of Maastricht University, and I met uh, uh, Professor uh, Ricardo the, ne next to me. We'll, we'll do the laudatio in a little bit. and we very briefly met, it was a very quick visit, we hopped by and, and actually talked to each other and said, hey, there is something we want to do. And, and out of nine years, that collaboration take a long time, I think in 2017, 2018, we, we met and we said, ah, we, we need a guinea pig, a first person to explore how to do a dual PhD between uh, our, two, uh, our two universities. And it uh, was a lot of work to figure the paperwork out, the documentation out, to get signatures of our legal departments and things like that on all the documents, and you pioneered that uh, with us. And we had a whole plan, and then, then COVID came, and the whole plan got messed up, and all our plans didn't work out. But in the end, uh, uh, you finished very nicely, uh, a nice booklet complete, and uh, a very nice, uh, nice work. And I hope that this is the first one of many to come between our universities, because we now know how to do it. Eh? We, we have the signatures one time, we should be able to get them much faster the second time. So. I think you are the, the pioneer to, uh, to explore Maastricht University uh, uh, UFMG uh, uh, collaboration. So thank you for exploring that and thank you for uh, uh, having a very nice uh, time in research together. And I hope that uh, yeah, you stay around and, and continue this and uh, we can work uh, together. And I'll uh, hand the microphone uh, uh, next door for uh, uh, the laudatio by the person who really supervises you most <laughs> of the time. Thank you. So, Williania, now it's time. Thank you very much. First, I would like to say thank for you. I know that you overcame a lot of barriers, all the technological barriers. I adopted William a few years ago uh, when she started to do the, the master degree, and she learned about it all. So she learned how to do proteins, she learned how to select new targets, how to put into new technological device. And it was a good plan, and it were, of course, we were pursuing this plan between Maastricht University and UFMEG, and you made this possible. So uh, all the barriers, again, all the language barriers, you learn, and you uh, made the hard work. And uh, Thomas already told that uh, our, our history, that we have nine years to pursue this collaboration, and you made it, again, uh, this is a new step. Uh, from William's thesis, we learned to get how difficult is the bureaucracy between uh, universities <laughs> across the Atlantic, and we made this possible. And again, thank you very much. Thank you very much 
for to stay uh, to share your time with uh, with me, Bart, Casper, Thomas, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for our people and supervisor. You the best. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Dr. Siker, uh, also on behalf of Maastricht University, uh, I congratulate you with the degree you have acquired. And I would like to extend those um, congratulations, of course, to your uh, family, your friends, uh, your colleagues, uh, the people present, but also those present online. Um, let me also use the opportunity to thank um, all the participants in this uh, committee, especially those who traveled to get here or who joined from abroad. Thank you very much for being here. Um, and by this, uh, let me close the academic part of the ceremony. Um, that means there's still a few. building, uh, and then the reception, I understood, is going to be at the department elsewhere, and we'll probably move there uh, as a group. So thank you all for being here, and uh, congratulations again. Thank you.